I wanted to make a cool science meme, but all the good ones are gone. <laughs> We're going to talk about the nuclear radius and closest approach. Let's get into it. So for the nuclear radius, let's remind ourselves again what a nuclide is, and we're going to look at, uh, remember what this right here means. A right here, what's that? That's the mass number, which tells us the number of nucleons, which is the number of protons plus neutrons. And remember what Z is, that's the atomic number, so that's the number of protons. Then if we want to know the size of the radius of the nucleus, then we have this equation right here, and it goes R equals R0, times a to the power of one third. This is on your data booklet. Okay, so what does everything mean? Well, r is the nuclear radius. That's the, you know, the size of the nucleus. Well, the radius of the nucleus. Um, r0 is actually known as the Fermi radius, and you don't have to memorize that. You look it up in your data booklet, but it's 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. So very small, obviously. So if you ever see a distance that's on the order of 10 to the minus 15, then we're talking about the size of the radius of the nucleus. All right, and then we've got A is the atomic, uh, sorry, that's the mass number, which is the number of nucleons. So it tells you this top number right here, sorry, the, that A number, that will be used in order to tell you the atomic radius. Okay, so let's go uh, and remind ourselves about Rutherford scattering because we're going to be talking about the distance of closest approach using this example here. So if we have an alpha particle, remember an alpha particle is helium-4, which has a little 2 at the bottom, it's got two protons. Remember what this one here, this one here is gold, which is AU, and this is 79, 197. You don't have to memorize those numbers, though that's fine. But you do have to know that, okay, well, this was positive, that was positive. And remember, in that extreme example of uh, Rutherford scattering, we have this example where this thing right here comes out. And, for example, then it actually, you know, turns around, for example. And if that's the case, then, well, we have this distance, then, where it went. So this one right here, this distance right here, maybe, I'll just call it like this right here. This right here, I'll define that as R. That'll be the distance of closest approach. And remember, the reason for that uh, right there is because, well, this positive alpha particle is repelled by the positive nucleus. And why is the nucleus positive? Well, it's got neutrons, which don't do much for the charge, but the protons, that makes it positive. Okay, so how do we find this distance of closest approach? Well, we're going to consider it from energy. And this alpha particle, it's got a bunch of kinetic energy when it's initially coming in. And what's going to happen is right as it reaches that distance of closest approach, right when it's as close as it can get, well, it's got no kinetic energy anymore, and actually that's been transferred to electric potential energy. Turns out that's going to be the key. So we're going to set the kinetic energy equal to the electric potential energy. So in other words, I'm going to just write this down maybe. So EK, the kinetic energy initially, is equal to the electric potential energy. Now it helps to remind ourselves of these equations. So kinetic energy, well, that'll be half mv squared. That's the kinetic energy of this alpha particle. And of course, I'm going to set that equal to, well, what's the electric potential energy? That's kq1, q2 over r. Okay, so if I really need to open it all up, that's what I could do. But in this case, I'm going to be a little bit lazy. I'm just going to leave this piece right here. I'm just going to leave it back as ek, like we had before. And that's going to be the initial kinetic energy of the alpha particle. Well, that means if I want to rewrite it, then I'll just say, well, ek... I know I've gone a little bit backwards, but it's just to, to show you this. So we've got K, uh, KQ1, Q2 over R, and I want to solve for R. R is going to be my distance of closest approach. So then I'll rewrite it then as R equals, let's see, I multiply both sides by R to get it up here, and I'll divide both sides by EK. So that means I have R equals K times Q1 times Q2 over the kinetic energy, the initial kinetic energy. And if I needed to break it into it, I could. I could say it's half mv squared if I was given that. But this right here is not uh, on your data booklet, but it's really important to be able to get to it, okay? So this is the distance of closest approach. Now, what if you actually needed to calculate these charges? How do you find the charge? So I just wanted to give you a little uh, exam tip here. This is going to be really important. So let's just say we've got uh, helium, for example, uh, which is the alpha particle. Let's say we compare that to gold, for example. And remember gold, uh, well, I told you before, you don't have to memorize it, but it's this. Okay, so how do we actually figure out the charge? Well, maybe uh, you can say Q, for example, could be the charge of the nucleus. And here's a, a really important trick. It's just Z times E. In other words, uh, this value, which one is Z again? Z is the bottom number. So this one right here, for example, will be this number right here. 
is going to be here. So that's going to be 79. So that means I'm going to say it's 79 times uh, the elementary charge, in other words, the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So that would be that one. And how about the alpha particle? Maybe I'll do that in a different color. Uh, the alpha particle will be, uh, well, this here will be 2. So I'll use that number right here. So that means that'll equal 2 times this elementary charge again, so 2.1.6 uh, times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay, so there are deviations to this right here. So I mean, at high uh, initial energy, so this you know E alpha, for example, this initial energy of the alpha, well, the closest approach distance, it's, uh, it's going to become small. Now, why is that? Well, we have this equation we had before, remember? R equals, and it was K, Q1, Q2 over E K, or in other words, E alpha here. So why? Uh, what's going on here? Well, we can see that R is proportional to 1 over so that means if this here gets larger, then this here gets smaller. But there's a there's a limit, right? As you get closer and closer and closer, you can't get infinitely close. There's something interesting that happens. That's this deviation, which is at some point it no longer obeys the Rutherford scattering. Why is that? That's because we have something else, something else called the strong nuclear force. It takes over and it attracts. It does not repel. So that's the really interesting part, I think. All right, so let's hammer out an example. We have a gold nucleus, which is AU, and we're given a 197, 79 here. It has an alpha particle. Remember what an alpha is? Alpha is four, like this right here, so helium four. All right, and the initial kinetic energy of the alpha particle is 21 mega electron volts, and it returns straight back from the gold nucleus. What's the nuclear radius of the gold nucleus? Hmm. Remember how we find the radius again? We have an equation for it, don't we? Do remember, it's r equals r zero a to the power of one third. Now we just got to figure out what the different values are. So we, if we want this radius, well, okay, let's go r equals. Now we know r zero. That'll be easy to find. But what about a? Actually, I'll start maybe just putting in the numbers. So r zero, we can look it up. It's one point two zero times ten to the minus fifteen. That's the Fermi radius. And then we have A, and remember A is the top number right here. So this one here is for gold, at least, it's going to be 197. And that's going to be the power of 1 third. I'm just going to get out my calculator to do this. Okay, so I'll say 1.20 times 10 to the minus 15. Okay, I'm going to take that number, and I'm going to multiply it by, let's see, I'm going to do 197 to the power of, and then I'm going to do a pretty fraction, and I'll say 1 over 3. Okay, let's see what I get. I get 6.98238 times 10 to the minus 15. Now, since I'm allowed two significant figures, then I'll just say this is 7.0 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. And there's our answer to part A. Okay, so in part B, we're going to try to find the distance of closest approach. And I've redrawn the drawing, and I'm just reminding you, remember the kinetic energy initially of the alpha particle is 21 mega electron volts. Okay. Because you don't get the equation for this, uh, you have to be able to come up with it yourself. So I'll show you again how to do it. We go EK, the kinetic energy initial, is all transferred to electric potential energy. So that means I can say EK equals EP. Okay, that means I have an equation then. EK equals, and remember the potential energy is KQ1, Q2 over R. Now I'm going to write it like a capital Q and a lowercase q. I prefer those for like the big one and the small one. So, And I'm going to reverse these. So I'm going to say R is up here, EK is down here. So that means I'm going to say R equals K, capital Q, lowercase q, all that over EK. And that will be my equation for my distance of closest approach. Now I just got to put in the numbers. So what do I know? I know that K, for example, that's a constant. It's 8.99 times 10 to the 9. And it's uh, Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. Then we've got capital Q. That's the charge of the big one. Remember, the uh, that's uh, gold. Remember what we do for this one right here? The charge is the lower number right here. So that's going to be 79 times the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And that's, of course, in coulombs. Then we've got lowercase q, the smaller one. Well, that's just going to be a 2, so it's going to be 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. 
And that, oh, I've got EK, the kinetic energy, and I'm going to need this in uh, proper units of joules. So this 21 mega electron volts, well, remember mega means 10 to the 6. And electron volt, remember how to do that? One electron volt, uh, I'll just multiply this number here like this. This is going to be times, uh, well, one electron, uh, one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, but this times it's in joules. I just pointed to those and remember this here that's because it was 21 MeV and this is because that's 1 EV here. Okay, so um, let's just put all these numbers in. So I'll just be ready here with my calculator. I'm going to say, well, R equals, and I'll just put in all the numbers here. All right, that was pretty gross, but good news, I can cross off at least one of these. So I don't have to type them out all the time. I mean, they're canceling each other out. Um, and I'll just get out my trusty calculator and do this. So let's go ahead. I'll do a fraction and I'll say, okay, it's 8.99 times 10 to the 9, all that times 79, all that times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, all that times 2, don't forget, and then all that divided by 21 times 10 to the positive 6 because it was mega. And there we go. My answer is 1.08222 times 10 to the minus 14. Well, I'm only allowed two uh, significant figures because the 21 mega electron volts, so I will say R equals approximately, let's see, this 8 will round this one here up to a 1, so that means I'll say 1.1 times 10 to the minus 14, and that's meters.